it's alive! Alive! Well, the South Bend 10K is running. If you want to see how I got it running, stick around. I'll show you how I did it. Well, I did clean the machine when I first got it, but once I took it apart and really looked at it, this thing is filthy. So I grabbed the Purple Power and the WD-40 and I'm going to take the Purple Power with the two toothbrush that is some rags and clean that up and I didn't even know this pulley was aluminum until after I started cleaning it but I noticed that there are all kinds of chips everywhere in here too so it's a good thing that I took this off and started to clean it it starts becoming apparent to me that with all these chips and stuff under here and the dirt and the amount of grease that's on this thing that this probably has never been cleaned up like this or it's been a long long time since it has and I didn't even know this pulley was aluminum until after I cleaned it there she is all cleaned up not perfect but the big grease gunk and chips are off of it and it's ready to install and there we have the underdrive successfully installed so systematically, part by part, I get it cleaned up with the purple power and then all the just cleaned metal surfaces that aren't painted. I put a little surface film of oil on it so it doesn't rust and continue on and on. And guys, I've been watching Tubal Cain, uh, Mr. Pete 222 for years and years and I've heard him talk about using compressed air on your lathe. And it's your lathe, you can do with it what you want. But I can tell you, I can see now what he's talking about because there were chips in places that there's no way they could have got there unless they were blown there. As a matter of fact, behind the tail stock, which has a little bitty gap in it, there were more chips under there than the size of the tail stock itself. I, I couldn't believe how many chips were under it. Here's the spot I break out the WD-40 and the Scotch-Brite just to clean up the, the ways there. Right now, as you can see the lathe moving around, I have it on moving dollies, which make it easy to push in and out. Eventually, I'm going to have something a little bit more sturdy, but right now, I like the ability to move the whole thing around. Now here you're going to see me install the headstock and then I realized that I have to put the change gears on or the gear assembly that is before the headstock goes on because the screws for that are actually under the headstock. So eventually I think it was four times I put the headstock on and took it back off. It was four or five times with little things that I would forget here and there. So you'll see that headstock a couple of times. Forgot to stick this in, so had to take the headstock back off. Here's yet another part that I'm so happy that I took apart. This thing was full of chips and old grease so got that cleaned up even though when I show you at the end it's going to look stained it is cleaned and just like I said here it's all cleaned up but you can see some staining on the back side of this this is a setup that I got um, I'll show you what it is there's a piece here and then two pieces here. Now that it's been welded, and we cut off uh, 
excess. Okay, just kind of a quick thing to show how I fasten those belts. Uh, what I did is I took these two pieces of angle aluminum and just clipped them here on both ends of the belt leaving a little left over on both of the undersides and then I took this piece as a way to hold it and held these like this while my son came in heated this up till it got blue and then he stuck it between them like this and I put both ends onto the hot iron until I saw it get a um, little soft and bubbly pulled it off and I slid it together and held it and you can see that that lines those belts up perfectly and um, as I pushed them together until they held then I clamped this up here with another clamp like that and just let it sit and uh, and I went and started trimming it off but that's how I did that Ta-da! A surprise unboxing. Guys, I got myself a BFD. And what this is doing for me is this is a three-phase motor on that lathe. And I don't have three-phase power, so I got this um, BFD that will take just regular house current 110 and change it into three-phase 220. Now, I made sure I got the BFD that does that. And I really am surprised at how well this works. And I got the remote cable, so if I want to mount the control face remotely, I can. Okay, guys, moment of truth. I've got this hooked up temporarily just to do, see how it's going to work. And I'm very afraid that the magic smoke may come out. So, here we go. I'm going to plug it in and let's see what, uh, what happens. Oh, good news. No smoke. No smoke. Okay. Now, let's try the very first thing. I got to watch out for that chuck. So, we're going to hit run. Okay, that turned on. Oh, check it out. Oh, dude. Now, I know, guys, with these VFDs, you can hear a really weird kind of sound coming through the audio. I don't hear anything out here. I have to check the camera, but oh my goodness, this is smooth as silk. Look at that, boys and girls. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead with stop. Now I haven't done any programming, so this must how it came from the factory program to stop. Wow, that's a very smooth, they do it at a very, very slow rate. Okay. Now that I know that this works, uh, let's go run again. That's forward. Now here you can change it just pushing that forward reverse. Okay, so it is slowing down. I'm going to have to do some programming on that because that's real slow. But let's see uh, once it goes to zero. Show enough. you got to be kidding me. This thing rocks. Okay, I'm going to hit the stop again. And uh, now i got to go get the real wires and wire it in with the, the switch on here. I don't have it wired into the switch. I have it directly to the motor. And I'm here to tell you that thing is smooth as silk, guys. Now, I mounted the VFD right behind the lathe, and there shouldn't be any bad stuff that gets to it. 
But it did, uh, I bought this extra cable, and that's just in case I have to mount the VFD somewhere. I can have this somewhere else. It's kind of nice. Uh, so, I can run the lathe. Let's go run. And there she starts up right there. I'll go ahead and stop it. Because right now, I don't think that's going to be in the way, so I'm going to stick that back on there. But I do have the... Um, the ability to make this thing remote. Alrighty, I just have to cut some chips. I got on my uh, little lathe and took one of these little bars like I always cut off, turned it round so it'll fit in here, and let's make some chips for the first time on the south bend. Well, here goes nothing. I have to try the automatic feed and I set it at one and a half thousandths per revolution. Cuts it smooth as silk. Less than a half a thousandths over that. Unbelievable. I haven't done anything with um, special tooling or I just set it up and wow, I'm impressed guys, very impressed. Well guys, I am extremely impressed with this South Bend 10K without any adjustments at all. I just took it apart, brought it to my basement, cleaned it, put it back together and stuck in a tool that I didn't even do any special grinding on. And with this little test piece that I did there over a couple of inches here, it just had like a half a thousandth uh, different in the diameter. So I do believe with a little tweaking I can get this thing, well it's pretty accurate right now, but I think I can get it extremely accurate. A uh, couple things that I'm gonna do in the future is I'm gonna get a, a emergency stop button on it for the VFD and also I'm gonna wire in the factory off on reverse and put that for the VFD and have it running off of that. And uh, might start cleaning it up. I want to do a full restoration with painting and all that, but right now I'm just going to get it tweaked and run it exceptionally well. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.